If there was one word that dictated success in Formula 1, it'd be positioning. As much as it could be many other things, the position a driver puts themselves in is crucial to their short-term success and long-term survival. That's because I don't mean exclusively a driver's position in regards to the optimum racing line or even grid position. Where a driver positions themselves off-track is arguably all the more important. A rocket ship can make a champion out of a journeyman, just as a tractor can make Q1 survival an uphill battle for even a top-tier driver. Driver, so it is massively important for a driver to secure the best seat possible for themselves. The current silly season we find ourselves in has threatened to massively shake up the grid. However, those sacred top seats have fast disappeared, leaving the remaining hopeful drivers slim pickings in regards to where they position themselves for the 2026 regulation change. McLaren and Ferrari are fully closed. Red Bull is conditionally closed, and if rumors are to be believed, the last two of the top five teams may be about to shut their doors on the rest of the field by securing their drivers for the future. So just how bad is this for the remaining drivers? And who could we be seeing in black and in green in the near future? Want to know the recent updates surrounding the second seat at Mercedes? Some pretty big theories have been surfacing, and some of them may just be crazy enough to come true. And stick around because Aston Martin is facing a dilemma and only one man can decide the fate of the team. In the run-up to the Chinese Grand Prix, there's been an awful lot of theorizing as to who Lewis Hamilton's replacement will be. At the end of the day, despite Sebastian Vettel fans foaming at the mouth for any kind of Seb involvement with F1, and despite those that want to get Max out of Red Bull and level the playing field a bit, there are only two real contenders for the seat, Carlos Sainz and Andrea Kimi Antonelli. Last week, we covered all the reasons we think Carlos Sainz would be ideal for Mercedes, but perhaps why Mercedes may not be ideal for Carlos Sainz. However, it now seems that the pundits have decided to plant their flags firmly in the Antonelli camp. Across multiple podcasts, blogs, and news sites, a sudden surge in Antonelli-centric rumors has seen pundits pulling out their calendars and theorizing as to not if, but when we could hear the news about Antonelli's ascent into Formula 1. All of this for a 17-year-old who has under three F2 events under his belt. Now, that isn't necessarily a fair assessment to the driver, who likely has more championship trophies than I have gold in Gran Turismo license tests. But just because he's been fast-tracked up to F2, does that really mean he's going to be ready to get fast-tracked up to F1? Well, after the three events, he sits ninth after some respectable points finishes, beating his teammate Oli Behrman, though that may be due to other circumstances such as Behrman missing a round to give Carlos Sainz's Ferrari a spin. And Antonelli has been showing glimpses of what makes him quite an exciting prospect in a strangely struggling Prima. Skipping to Formula 2 does mean that he lacks the experience of the F3 category, however he is already putting himself above some of the journeymen of F2 and getting to grips with the general procedures of the higher formulas incredibly quickly. Tom Clarkson put forward a theory that we think stands a pretty good chance of seeing the light of day, providing all goes well for Antonelli for the first half of the year and all continues to go poorly for another driver at the same time. The only question mark is what happens alongside George Russell? Is it going to be Carlos Sainz? Is that going to be Kimi Antonelli, who is testing for Mercedes at the Red Bull ring? But equally, is Toto Wolff going to want to give Antonelli a little bit of mileage before the Mercedes promotion? He turns 18 at the end of August, and 18 is the magic number in Formula 1, because you can't race younger than that. So, could we see Antonelli do the second half of the season at Williams before then getting plugged into the Mercedes next year? Who knows, but now it's all about Mercedes. Given that Logan Sargent has so far shown no real threat of breaking the current standards he has set, it's not like by having Antonelli in the car, Williams would see a drastic decline in points or performance. Given their start to the season having the same impact on their finances as a brick would have to evade, it could be argued that having a rookie in the car would increase the likelihood of crashes. However, their current drivers are already proving to be fairly crash happy, so yet again, this wouldn't necessarily be a downgrade. It would, however, mean Williams cutting off Logan Sargent and searching for a second driver for 2025 onwards, but there is currently a plethora of talent available, including current F2 champions who would be available to take the seat next to Alex Albon. Albon himself would prove crucial to Antonelli's chances at the Mercedes seat if Williams were to take him in following Zandvoort, as he would provide the perfect litmus test for the young Italian driver. By the time Zandvoort and Antonelli's 18th birthday rolls around, he will have already taken part in a two-day test at the Red Bull ring in April in the Mercedes W12, which on a side 
side note, to us feels almost like setting him up with false senses of quality in regards to Mercedes' current position. Plus, it's from the old aero regs, so it's even less representative. However, this, alongside any free practice sessions he may step in for, will be crucial in understanding whether or not he would be ready to step up midway through the season, or if F2 is the best place for him for the time being. The key worry about Antonelli is that all of this may be a bit too rushed and impact his career in the long term if he doesn't immediately take like a duck to water. However, that may not be something that Toto Wolff is willing to take into account, as he has already been all too hesitant with a wonder kid before and has now spent three years being thoroughly beaten by him. Will Buxton believes that Toto getting burnt before will be a key reason for giving Antonelli the seat, even if a bit prematurely, as the pundit had this to say to the Red Flag podcast. Antonelli is going to Mercedes. I think Toto has made his mind up, he wants Antonelli in the seat. Because he's pissed. He is pissed that he missed the opportunity to give Max the opportunity back in 2014. So you put Antonelli in the seat. The litmus test was Behrman. Behrman did the job. Okay, great. So we can stick a kid straight in from Formula 2. Buxton would raise possibly the most pertinent reason for sticking Antonelli in the car that we've heard, and it could potentially provide a silver lining to Mercedes's current woes that show no signs of ending anytime soon. 2025 is a write-off for Mercedes anyway, until the new regulations in 26, so you bring him in, no pressure, get him to know the team, get him to work with George Russell, understand what Mercedes are all about. Bam! New car, new regulations in 2026, go for the title, have a run at it. The other seat, which hasn't been entirely closed off, however, it has had a reserved sign on it consistently for the past four years, is the Aston Martin second seat. I know, I know, before you start booing and saying it's already Lance's, it is worth exploring why the seat hasn't fully been closed off yet. As of now, and as far as we know, Alonso is the only one with an official contract at the team that moves into the new regulations. For a long time now, there have been murmurings about Lance Stroll's future in the sport, sprouting from his often disinterested demeanor and known interests that lay elsewhere. The ideal time to bow out if he and his father chooses for him to do so would be prior to the new regulations, so the team can adjust both drivers to his 2026 approach. And while it is in the air as to whether that will happen, it is certain who the team's top targets would be if it were to. The three drivers fall into three distinct categories, the best driver, the one in line, and the engine manufacturer's choice. The best driver is clearly Carlos Sainz, who is still looking for a new home, and if what we have already discussed comes to pass, will have only one place to look to for a top 5 seat. The one who is already in line is the current reserve and test driver 2022 F2 champion Felipe Drogovic, a driver who really came into his own in his final year of F2 and naturally deserves a shot in F1 based off of his championship alone. And finally, the engine manufacturer's choice is Yuki Tsunoda. As early as May last year, Koji Watanabe expressed Honda's desire to have their factory driver reunited with the engine supplier, however stressed that the final decision would be down to the team. The best lineup without a doubt would be a deadly Spanish duo of Sainz and Alonso. If given the car that Aston Martin currently believes they are capable of with Honda, that duo could compete across both championships convincingly. However, if that weren't to come to fruition, we'd love to see Drogovic get his time in an F1 car. Regardless of all of this, the current man in the seat will choose when he or his father feels it to be the right time, and as of right now, it would seem that Aston Martin is just as closed off as the rest of the top five teams.